did you guys even understand what the decision meant or that the decision impacted you and you're not seeing results? Absolutely. Okay. For me, I'll see if I can make it quick for you. My family had a lot of successful people in it mm -hmm. that worked with the restrictions that were put on them. One of my grandfathers was a fire captain down at number three fire station, um, um, which was all black fire station on third and Jefferson Street. He was the captain. And, um, my other grandfather was a porter on a private train car. He was Red Skelton Porter. Mm -hmm. That's as high as he could have gotten. Okay, uh, a private car porter's pretty big. Uh, a captain's as big as you could get then. Um, my mother had her own beauty salon for 47 years. She was trained by Madam C.J. Walker, the greatest uh, trainers in the land when it comes to cosmetology, her and her sisters. And um, actually, she was part of the Green Book. If you look in there, you'll see her beauty salon. My father worked for 43 years for the uh, VA hospital system after World War II. I mean, when you follow people like that around, it's kind of hard to start failing at something. You're going you're gonna to find out that's not a good thing. To answer your question, then I come along with these rights. Okay, the rights were starting to be there where I could actually do things they could not do. So when you start working outside the lines of restrictions, then now you, you got some challenges. But I don't believe you should ever have any problems. You should only have opportunities. Yeah. So I, I moved on with the things that I could do. Um, I didn't carry the burden of I'm not going to be able to do it anymore. I'm going to do it and they're not going to stop me because I'm going to do it within those lines that they've set up. I'm going to be there. Well, basically, that's my whole life. I grew up in, in, in that type of, of, of environment. You know, success. You can be what you want to be as long as you're allowed the opportunity to. Mm -hmm. So I was allowed the opportunity that they weren't allowed. And I was going to make sure that I was going to make them proud of me taking advantage of that opportunity. Yes, there was restrictions out there. I, I can't sit there and tell all the stories, but I made it through because I wasn't going to be denied, you know, because I'm working within the system. And I'm not trying to mess the system up. Well, it, it was more than that. It, our neighborhood, um, everything that I was around, the church, uh, organizations, they were all people that weren't trouble. They, they were trying to have a, a good life as best they could have it. And I got to witness all that. And I got to witness, the, <coughs> excuse me, some of the best athletes, African American athletes in Topeka, uh, Old City Park, you know. That's as far as they could go then, okay? But I got to see all that. So all that was telling me, I, I want to be able to do the things I can do too, the best I can. And if I'm going to have a situation that stops me, I'm the one that's going to make that problem happen. Okay, okay so that I didn't blame it on anything. Mm -hmm. What was it like in the broader community during that time frame? Okay, well, I'm, I'm kind of known to be a historian myself. Okay. But once again, I was a benefit of being raised in the 50s and 60s as, as a kid. Um, I'm gonna name some things people may not remember. City Park was, was on 1st and Kansas Avenue mm -hmm. and was quite active, ball field down there. They had a gazebo that had bands. They had a swimming pool. A block up the street, uh, 200 block Kansas Avenue, was the Carver Y. Mm -hmm. It was an African American YMCA. Okay, many activities went on there. Uh, big social events, big dances, a lot of uh, fraternity, sorority type of things going on. There was social clubs, okay. Um, I was a member of Jack and Jill of America. Okay, okay an African-American organization that mothers put together wanting to have um, uh, the, the kids to have a better life and, and to be more functional in, the, in society. Um, St. John Church is where I attended church when I was, I was young. Um, activities there. Um, basically, most of the things that were going on, I think even after, let's say the 60s, people chose to stay where they were at. Some of the clubs and things around town. They didn't want to 
venture across to the west side of town. The clubs weren't supposed to be over there. That's not where the fun was. Right. I mean, even my mother to this day, um, I remember her saying, I wish they would not never did the desegregation. We had more fun in Monroe School and learned a whole lot more than the, than the public school systems could ever teach these kids. So there was a, a group or a faction that maybe wasn't in support of Brown? No. No? Okay. It's, it's looked at both ways. Mm -hmm. She got to go to Monroe. Mm -hmm. And she was told, okay, let's go there with my mother. When she was at Topeka High School, um, her and her sister and their best friend formed a thing called the Colored Girls Choir. Mm -hmm. It was only in existence one year. And they were farmed out around town to do different luncheons and business events and things like this because they could flat out sing, right. okay? But she was told to be of service. Don't even think about, you know, going out and being anything in life. You learn some skills and go, go serve some people. She did not listen to that information. She went to Madam C.J. Walker in Kansas City with her sister and became her own uh, occupant for 47 years. Right. Okay, so she, did she want to shop, you know, downtown? No. Mm -hmm. She wanted to shop exactly where it was in the same house she was living in, in, in the neighborhood. Bowser's Mortuary was two blocks, I mean, two doors down from where we were when it was the, the original Bowser's on 18th and Van Buren Street. So, I mean, our house didn't have any doors on it. If folks went to the funeral, they'd come to the house, or they'd come to the house, go to the funeral, or, you know, it was quite active. So I was around a lot of successful people all the time that um, I could learn from. I listened a lot. What do you think the advantage of the decision is for, for, from your personal point of view? It, it opened the door to say you have to give those chances. Okay, you have to give way and give up the chances. But it's also, once that door is open, people have to be willing to take that chance. Mm -hmm. And that's the difference. You can't let fear say, well, they're never going to let me do that. And shame on those who stop them. Okay, so that's the difference now. If the door is open and you want to do something, I don't think it's as bad as it used to be. Uh, it's kind of difficult because we're, we're educated people now. Everybody's educated. Uh, trying to hide something in some paperwork is not a good idea anymore, okay? So I think um, by allowing everybody to blend is a good thing. Being able to go in Van Buren, you got a friend, a mm -hmm. lifelong friend. Would you mm -hmm. like to tell us that story? Well, um, my friend's name is Doug Duffy. The article um, was brought out on us at, at the uh, 50 uh, reunion in the Capital Journal. And I wanted to speak on the benefits of what happened after the, the deal. And Doug's mother, some people remember, owned Peggy's Parakeet Shop, which was on Kansas Avenue. It was a pet shop. And they lived in that place. Well, he could look out his front door and see Monroe School two blocks down the street. But Van Buren School was two blocks to the back of their house. So Van Buren School and Monroe School were basically three blocks apart. Right. And if it wasn't for the desegregation and me going to Van Buren, he also went to Van Buren. So we would have met each other. If that would have never happened, I don't know if I would have ever met him. And we've been lifelong friends forever. And he scratched his way because they had nothing. They were poor just like everybody else. And he made something out of himself because there were restrictions in a lot of other situations too. Some rich people didn't want more rich people. <laughs> okay, so, so, so some other people were, were in that loop of wanting to be better too. Right, right. So, but like I said, our neighborhood had some of everybody in it. Did you guys ever experience any um, negativity because of your your friendship? Absolutely not. Okay. Um, I can remember leaving school for the day and we'd walk out to the street and I'd say, well, hey, Doug, you know, had some fun today, didn't we? Yeah, and he'd start walking with me, but he's walking in the wrong direction and he's heading towards our house. And by the time we get on the doorstep, you know, here comes mom. Say, hey, how you doing, Doug? Hey, how you doing, Mr. Napier? Come on in. And he'd come in and eat. 
Mm-hmm. Okay, so and uh, I've, I've eaten at his house. Okay, so we didn't know anything but each other. Mm-hmm. So we, we didn't have all the other things to look at. We had to go find those things and get those things to hard work. Mm-hmm. He's the fleet man.